This video is sponsored by Gelato. Sign up for free and get 50% off your first order in the first three days. I love using Gelato for my print-on-demand needs. However, in this video, we're going to switch it up. Under Product Catalog, I'm going to go to Photo Books, and I'm going to do a walkthrough on how you can create an absolutely spectacular hardcover photo book. Now, if you've never heard of Gelato before, they're a print-on-demand solution that partners with a number of high-end brands. They integrate with stores like Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and they're also globally situated so that they can ship orders really quickly all over the world. So in this video, I'm going to do a walkthrough on how to do a hardcover photo book. And if you've always dreamed of being a published author, creating and selling your own coffee table book through print on demand can be an excellent opportunity. Okay, so let's jump in now and start designing the coffee table book. It's going to be 28 centimeters by 28 centimeters. That's 11 by 11 inches. And I'm going to only do the 30 page book, which is $22 Canadian. However, you could go up to 200 pages in size. So I'm not going to do anything that ambitious in this video. So I'm going to simply click the start designing button and that's going to open up the template for us to jump in and start designing. You're going to see a menu along the left hand side. The number of pages is 30 and then you're going to see this template here right in the middle and down at the bottom we can see there's different pages that we can also take a look at and using my little scroll bar I can move this along and I can move this from left to right. So I've got my cover page which is on the right hand side and then I've got my inside page as well. I want to point out using this template it's really easy to build it but the cover is on the right and you can't actually put anything on the back cover and then on the inside of the first page your first page is on the right hand side and you can't put anything on the inside of the cover. That's really the only limitations though. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is put our cover photo on here. So on the left hand side under files, I'm going to click the files button and then I'm going to choose a file that I can add into my library here. So it's going to say drop files. I'm going to click my device. Okay, and here are all my pictures that I've got. Now most of them are travel photos, but I've got a couple backgrounds as well. I've got a re retro paper background and then a black background background. So I'm going to just add all of these. I'm just going to hold down the shift key and just add them all and I'll click open. Okay, I have all my files uploaded here on the left hand side and now I want to just simply add a photograph over to the right. So I'm going to pick the arch here. I'm going to click it and you're going to see it's going to populate right there. Now it's a little bit bigger because it's not exactly a square. The template that I'm using is a square but I could move this around if I wanted. I could also drag the corners of it and make it smaller. I could even put more than one photo on here if I wanted to as well. So I'm going to make this nice and big, big enough that it's going to cover the whole thing. You'll see it snaps into place there, which is nice too. And that's going to be my file sitting right like that. Now I'm going to go over to the text window and I'm going to click add text. So I've entered the words my travel book. You can see though it's really dark text, right? So I'm actually going to just highlight this. I'm going to click inside of it and do control A. That's going to highlight all the text. Then up at the top I can select white text for example. Now I can move this to be up here. You can see the purple guide comes into play. And I don't really like that font. I'd really like to make it a bit better. So I'm going to click Control A again. And then I'm going to take a look at all the different fonts that I've got here along the left hand side. Anything that's got a little purple crown next to it is a premium font. So I can't use that. But there's lots and lots of free fonts here that I can use. And I'm going to see if there's anything. Oh, actually this is a really nice one here. So that's a great looking cover right there. Now I'm going to add in my name. So I'm going to click text, add text, and then I'll click here and I'll add my name in. Now I'm going to make this font a bit smaller. So I'm just going to click the minus button. I could also just type in the number or I can just select from the list. I'll move this down near the bottom and I will select a different font for my name. Okay, and now I will make my font white as well. Okay, now you might be looking at that Zen water cooler text down at the bottom and thinking, geez, it's white and there's a white piece of the photograph and it's hard to read. Okay, so here is a great next level tip. I'm going to go up to my files and I've actually made in Photoshop an 11 by 11 black box. It's right here. Now what I can do is just shrink this right down, make it a rectangle and I can hover it over my name and then using the layers panel, I can just move this down and I could have it look like that if you like. That I think looks really nice. There's the cover. 
Okay, now I'm going to click inside and the inside page here, the first page, I'm going to select my files and I'm going to select one of my first photographs here. I'll just go through them one by one and we can see here now I've got my Terracotta Warriors picture. Okay, so I've got the Terracotta Warriors listed. I do want to point out you you should be using as large of photos as possible and you have these little warnings along the left hand side. I'm going to click on the warnings and what it says here is average quality. So it's going to point to this average quality. It says the image resolution is 110 dots per inch. So just be aware that you may get that warning from time to time that comes up. You just want to have as large a photograph as possible. Okay, so now we've got the Terracotta Warriors here as well and I'm going to collect the text button, add text, and then I'm going to type in Terracotta Warriors. I'm going to make this font white as well. Now I'd like to put this up here like this, nice and arty, but you can actually make it really arty if you like by clicking on the spacing button which is right here and you can actually make the spacing larger or smaller if you like. I'm actually going to make this 200 and I think that looks really nice. It actually spaces it out. Now I'm going to click on inside page 2 and you can see now I've got two pages now to play with. So I'll go to my files, I'll select my picture and look at that. You could even have a double page spread if you like. So I'm going to put it like this and that'll be my Trondheim picture. So I'm going to do text, add text. I'm going to make it white. Then I'm actually going to add some text underneath it here add text. I'm going to highlight it, make it quite small. I'm going to make it 10 to start and then I'm going to paste the text in. Okay, so I've got it now. It's very, very tiny but that's okay. I'm going to double click in there and click Control A. I'll make sure that the text is white and then I'll make it just a bit bigger and in real time you can see now it's changing. So I think that looks really nice. Now because of the white in the clouds you may want to change this font and you could make it black for example. I think that looks really nice too. I'm going to click inside page 3 now and I'm going to add in my files and I'm going to add in a couple now because I was in New York and Toronto. I'm going to select Toronto along the left. So over on the right I'm going to pick my London photograph. So that's going to be right here. Now you can move it into position and this is kind of a neat trick. If you leave the photograph selected and then you pick another photograph it'll actually replace it with the other photograph. If you're happy with that one then you just need to select outside of the photograph and then you can select another file and then you can add that as well. Okay so I think that looks really good. Now I could add text in if I wanted to as well. Another thing that I really like doing is adding in backgrounds. So for example I'm going to select my photographic background here and I'm going to make sure that it's the same size as the actual page which is right like that. Just going to move it over and then using the layers button I can just simply move this down to the very background. The pictures now sit over top of the background. You can do the same thing with other pages as well. So I've got two other blank pages. I'm just going to simply select my black background and I'm going to just move it so that it's the entire width of the pages and it covers the whole book. There's these things called bleeds over on the tops and the bottom and the left and the right and the bleeds are just like margins of error. So you want to make sure that you've got your background selected and moved right over all the bleeds as well. Now you can add photographs like for example here I've got a nice European setting and I could make that set with a black background as well. It's so easy to use. You can basically drag stuff around, use the guides, and then by adding in your text, you can basically make a photographic album that looks professional with just pointing and clicking and typing. It's really cool. There's even an option down at the bottom called autofill. So I'm going to select that autofill and we'll just see what happens. And we can see now as I look through the rest of the book, the robot has just decided what to put in. And you know what? It's done a pretty good job. If you just wanted a very simple book, you simply upload your photographs into your files library, hit the autocomplete, and the next thing you know, you've got yourself a great looking book that within minutes is ready to go. I think this looks absolutely fantastic. Boy, the robot did a better job than me on some of these photos. This is great. There's another cool feature here you can use as well here. I've got a blank page in my book and on the left hand side I'm going to select layouts. And what I can do here for this page is I can select a layout. For example, I could select this one with three photographs, two small and one large. And when I click on it, it now gives me a template that I could then fill in using my files. So I can select the first one, then I can select my file that I'd like to put in there, my second one, and then the third one. 
and the file that I'd like to put in there. It's really just that easy. Okay, so I'm really happy with the way this looks. I'm going to click the Save button now, and we can see here, this is my order number, and it's saved as a draft, and I could continue to shipping, or I could also go in and I could work on it by clicking over on the right-hand side and clicking Edit Design. You can always come back and work on it later, too. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. I absolutely love using Gelato, and I love using this for making photograph books. It's a really easy way to make a coffee table book or a gift for a loved one, a friend, a family member. Thank you so much, Gelato, for sponsoring this video. I want to highly encourage you to sign up for Gelato. It is completely free, and if you order within the first three days, you can get 50% off your first order. I do want to point out the links in the video description is an affiliate link, and that means that if you were to click on it and you were to purchase something, I would receive a small commission. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and here's another video on how you can use Gelato to supercharge your print-on-demand experience.